welcome back to another Spraycastle tutorial. All right, so in this tutorial, I've had pretty good success by doing uh, the spray paintings that have just been two colors, right? So we, I think one of the last ones I did was blue and black. And then we created some trees in the background. Well, we're going to do something similar to that, but except we're going to use blue and different shades of blue. We'll see how that comes out. All right, this is uh, 11 by 14 poster board. You can find this poster board on my website. Okay, remember there's two sides to the poster boards, guys. There's the matted side and there's the glossy side. We always use the glossy side. And in fact, you can even tell the, the difference in, in color. This is more of an eggshell white. This is more of a, I don't know, like a really bright white. So that's the side that we, we always use. Uh, all right, well, let's begin. I'm going to start off by getting some blue. Just going to mix the blue here. And I'm going to use some white. Remember what happens when you mix white with blue? You get light blue. Okay. We're going to use our handy dandy tool here. We're going to mix that. Now then, before we get started on that part, make sure that your table is nice and clean. You don't want to get any of that trash on your poster board before you get started. Okay. So I'm going to add some, some blue on our sheet. This is going to be our background. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. This is also, an also uh, a great way of creating clouds. You can tell you can see a little bit of that white back there. You can leave that as it is. You can darken some areas so you can really accent where the clouds are at. Yeah, see? Very easy way of creating clouds, guys. Okay, now we're going to get this mixture. We're getting our light blue. We're going to create just a little bit of uh, a terrain here in the background. Okay. I'm just going to make these us. Uh, this could be distant hills. Now notice how the light blue is mixing with the blue that we mixed for our background layer, which our sky layer, I'm sorry. So it still gets a little bit darker blue, but then when we add our white on top of it, our lighter blue on top of it, it mixes, and it gives us a nice little transition between the dark blues and the light blues. Now then, I'm going to add a little more blue to this, to this mixture, making it a darker blue. So we're leaving the spectrum of the light blue color. Let me move some of these cans out of the way so that I can... Oh, today's easy. So that I can move my tool with ease. Here we just added a little bit more blue to our mixture that we had before. And you know what you can actually do as well. Just a little bit of white to give it that accent in the background. Could be some clouds, it could be a little bit of mist. And right here. Another hill right here. You know what? Perhaps this is all up to you guys. You can take a look at a picture, try and imitate some of those mountains, or you can create your own. In this case, we are creating our own. I like to do this better. So this is going to create a little bit of depth in our painting. As you're going to be able to see those mountains in the background, they're lighter than the ones that are closest to us. And just like that, we used a little bit of white so that you can see that fading effect in the background. Awesome. Now, 
I'm going to add again some blue. And this time I'm going to add some black to it. What is that going to do? That's going to give us a darker blue. Now, guys, this is the kind of things that I want you to experiment with. This is just for you guys to experiment so you can get used to how to create contrast between landscapes. You can add a little bit of white on this one as well. So see, as you're bringing it home, as you're getting closer to the viewer, your mountains become darker. Yeah. Pretty neat, huh? So as you bring in at home, you're getting darker and darker and darker. So I'm going to add some more black here. I'm going to add perhaps yeah, gonna add a little bit of blue. little bit of white I'm not going to spend a whole lot of detail on this water I'm so I'm just going to mix it and get us going with a nice transitional from dark blue always keep some napkins around guys so that if your fingers get a little bit of dirt you're able to clean them or clean the tool Look at that. Very easy way to create some quick water. Now what you can do, since we're getting closer to the viewer, to us, I'm going to add, I added more black to the mixture that we have here. Just going to add some right here. Now guys, the purpose of this tutorial is to show you guys how to create a fun, easy way of creating uh, depth in your paintings, how to create different landscapes using different shades of the same color. And all we're doing is adding either black or adding uh, a little bit of um, white to our colors, and you're able to create some very simple, yet with a lot of depth and perception to it. Is going to create a little piece of land here. Now, using the tool, it's going to go back and forth. A little bit of clear coat. Now, we don't have any paint here. This is just negative space. So, I'm going to use some of the paint that we've used here on our terrain. I'm just going to back and forth, back and forth. And that'll give us a nice little effect, like it's perhaps waves getting closer to us. I can use a little bit of black here. Tap, tap, tap. And retouch up that terrain. Okay. So, here I made different sizes of funnels. See that? Yeah, it looks like mama funnel and little funnels. <laughs> The reason I did that, guys, is because the smaller ones, you can create a little bit better detail, thinner detail. And so we're going to experiment with that today. I'm just going to add a little bit of blue. Now, this is dark blue. And just a little bit. I like to add just one, two little sprays of black. Shake that up a little bit. And... I think I'm just gonna add, test it out here. Good. Look them out. Perhaps black one. Oh, I don't know. Maybe here. No, 
Now I'm going to use a little bit bigger one. And this one's going to be black. Solid, solid black. I'm bringing it home, guys. I'm bringing the spray paints home. Uh, the spray paints, the, uh, the layers of the, the trees. So, um, yeah, I believe I'm going to make this one. Probably put this one right here. Up and down, up and down. This is okay. You guys get a little excess paint. Look at this. You can take it off. And you can rebuild it. Rematch the terrain here on the bottom. And it darkens it up as well. I'm going to add perhaps... Oh, this starts to happen. My surface is uneven. So sometimes the paint will settle in weird shapes here. All you do is you just go back and forth. Make sure that you even out the paint throughout this layer. Now what I like to do with my funnels is I cut a shape off right here. You see that? It's got, let me tip it this way so you can see the nice little 45 degree angle cut. That tip can help me combine the colors underneath. So it does the same effect as, as your tool. But you do it with your tool as your pouring paint onto your painting. Different techniques, different techniques. The only way you guys will get to experiment is if you actually start experimenting with these techniques, guys, with these tools. Awesome. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of that sea sponge. Just a nice little piece like this. I'm going to try and stay close to the schemes that we used before. So I'm going to use some blue, some white. Tap into these two. So it's going to give us a light blue. Light blue. Can you see that? Okay. A bit of light blue. And look how easy it is. Tap. Just gonna give it the shape of a nice little tree in the background. Now, this is, in my opinion, and I've been doing this for quite a long time, the best way for creating pine trees. I know a lot of people out there will use uh, the, the foam sponges. And they're good, but they'll make your trees look very flat. Very, uh... well, I should show you. I should go get some. I got some around here somewhere. But they make your trees look very flat to where the sea sponge. And right now, maybe you can't see the whole lot of detail on it. And that's because we're using this light blue and it's kind of blending in with the background. But that's okay. That's, that's what we wanted to do gives you a little bit more realistic looking type of trees. Add a few more right here. Maybe another one right here. At this point I'm just going back and forth in the shape of a little triangle, right? So I come up and I tap 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 and work my way down. Now as we get closer you're gonna be able to see this. Now, look at this. This is another thing. Now that I know, I don't believe I'm going to use any more light blue to create any more little trees here in, in the background. Well, maybe just one or two more. I'm going to start tapping into some darker colors. Now, guys, once you start tapping into some darker colors, uh, it's very hard to go back to the light colors. So I recommend that you make sure you are completely done using the light layers, or use another piece of sea sponge. You could always use just another sea sponge. But I like to get the most used out of them as possible. We'll add one here. 
Look how easy it is to create these little trees in the distance. Okay, I want to thank you guys for all the wonderful emails, all the wonderful texts I get on my Facebook, on my email. Uh, you guys can contact me either way. I personally recommend Facebook. I think I get more notifications on my, or it's easier to get the notifications on my, on my Facebook than it is on my email. I, you know, just because it was set up that way. And a few taps there. Tap tap, tap tap, tap 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 tap, tap 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 tap. Look at that. You see how this is creating the illusion of distance, trees in the background. All right, and all I'm using is just the variance of blue and white and blue and dark and black. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit more here. I like the way this is coming out. And I was telling you guys, you guys, thank you for all the wonderful emails, texts. Um, uh, all of you that, that have gone out of your ways to make contact with me on Facebook. Okay, I'm going to add some black, some blue. And, you know, these tutorials are based on the comments and questions that I get on there. You know, how to create different textures, different techniques for creating landscapes, for creating uh, space sceneries. I mean, whatever. Guys, I've done a little bit of everything. Um, I can paint human faces. If you guys want to see some of that, well, we can get into a tutorial and do something like that. But I don't like to skip around too much. I like to stick with the theme until I feel that people have gotten the hang of it. Because in some of these more advanced tutorials, when I start doing more advanced tutorials, I notice that uh, a lot of beginners, and it's not a bad thing, but I've noticed that a lot of beginners will want to jump few steps to get there and then they kind of get mad at me they're like hey well you made that look too easy and well you know you kind of skip a bunch of steps man you have to take it easy and learn certain techniques first before you can make those kind of jumps so it takes a little while sometimes for us to we go from intermediate to advanced now i know there's a lot of advanced spray painters out there so with them, uh, I'll you know make a few videos, master level techniques that I use, and and I'm not saying don't try them, guys. I'm just saying, um, you know, don't don't get mad at me if it doesn't work the first time. You you have to practice it, you know, have to keep going back to it and learning some of these techniques. Now, see, notice here, I'm just using black and blue, and as I'm bringing it home, as I'm making the painting look closer to us. I'm adding a little bit more black every time. You know what? I think I'll add. I think I want to leave it like that. I think that's good. So I'm just going to use this blue. And I like the way the, the sea sponges usually get stuck to my finger. Because I can still manipulate, be able to spray off on the side. Use most of my hands. Rather than putting it down. Every time. It happens every time. If I put the sponge down and I do something when I look for it, I can never find it. Never find it. I don't know what happens. Like the sponge shelves come and get take it. Now this is a smaller piece, so I have to go back and forth a little bit more to create the effect that you know it's it's fuller. Yeah, you can do this a lot a lot easier if you have a bigger piece. See how I'm having to go back and forth, back and forth. Oh, oh, piece of paint. So guys, if you're going to try something like this, you know, I definitely encourage you to try it. Please do so. Give it a try. Let me know how it works for you. But do keep in mind that I have a lot of tutorials out there, a bunch of tutorials that I'll show you uh, certain techniques that I that maybe I didn't cover on this one, but it's techniques that'll help you get to this point. So we have a lot of uh, intermediate, a lot of 
beginner, intermediate, advanced, and then, you know, master level techniques. And the master level techniques is the techniques that I use not only for galleries, but techniques that I use for creating uh, realistic hair, um, hair that I use on portraits. Uh, it'll show you techniques that I use for creating a little more realistic looking uh, pets. You know, stuff like that. And I, I show you the techniques and sometimes I don't go into great detail on the painting because it would take too long. So I say, okay, you know, this is a technique that I used here. And then I, I skip a few little steps just to show you. And this is the end product. But then there's videos that cover uh, the transitional phases that I use. So there's a, there's a lot of good information out there, guys. So with this new set of videos, I'm hoping to tackle a little bit more, more questions. And so I know there's a lot of you guys out there that are spray painting every day, and that is awesome. So for those of you guys, send me some emails. Some, if you guys have questions, comments, I definitely want to tackle them. I want to hear about them. I want to know your opinions. All right. Just a little bit here. This is just a layer of, again, look, for example, this is a layer of grass. How do you do your grass? Well, there are several different tutorials out there that talk about uh, grass techniques. So like in this tutorial, I didn't go into a whole lot of detail. You know, this is how you create grass. I just, if you're at this tutorial, by now you should have seen some of the other tutorials that I've made where I explained the grass technique. Right? So, all right, I'm going to remove it. Watch, this is where I'm going to put it. I may not be able to find it later. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, black. And it was just two quick bursts of black. Two or three quick bursts of blue. Mix that up. I'm going to add a little bit of clear coat here on the background. Using the soft tip tool, I'm just going to tip. I'm just going to get the very tip. With some color, I'm going to tap on here. This is going to give us the effect of a darker color in the background. I'll work this down. Do you see it? Just very slowly start working my way into this lighter part of the water. And that gives us depth. That gives us the illusion. Oh, you can see where the water starts meeting some of that back terrain. And as it gets closer to us, it gets a little bit lighter. Now, that's not always the case with landscapes. With landscapes, you want to start with the lighter colors and work your way to the darker colors. You know, I like the way this is coming out. I definitely, I think, I think I'm wanting to add another tree. Maybe right about here. Or maybe not. Maybe I think that's good. Maybe, you know what, maybe we can add one right about here. I don't know. Guys, this is your world. It's up to you, however you want to work this. In my case... Yeah, I think I'm going to add a little bit of black, some blue, that's about two seconds worth, so one, one thousand to one thousand blue, and about three seconds worth of black. I'm going to test it, see how much it comes out, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add just a quick one right here. Oh, now see, I know, I know that my table is not very even because of the plastic that I put on here, so I'm going to try and... I don't want one side of the paint to go, you know, and puddle up somewhere. So I'm just going to put this down. So the straighter, the more level your, your spray painting area is, guys, the better. I'll put the, the spray castle tip here. I'll go back and forth with this little point. And that's going to help me come up with some really cool looking texture on our tree. So if you're able to zoom into this, you'll see the texture, you'll see the bark. Now, maybe for the next tutorial, guys, I'd like to talk about how to create, you know, buildings off in the distance. I've seen a lot of people um, 
giving that a go and that's awesome I've done a few I've done several actually for buildings and I think I have a tutorial on here for um, an architect actually hired me to do uh, one for his for his office and it was uh, a painting of his office and for that one I used actual pictures cut out a couple of little stencils and then went back and forth and you know just made it look a little more realistic I guess you want to work on your tree bark you want to make sure that the tree branches and tree barks are visible if you add any tree branches you want them to be visible uh, if you want your tree to look very realistic well you know this is what you do you go back and forth tap 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 and you add the texture to it you, you want to be able to see that kind of texture on your tree if you add highlights well you're, then you're gonna want to use a lighter color and then go on top of it uh, I'll give you a quick example I'll just add a little bit of white to some of the mixture that we're using here uh, okay I'm gonna need a little bit more remember it's always easier to go to go darker than it is to go lighter so you, you need a lot more white to make a color lighter once you've darkened it look I'm just gonna tap here go along the edge to create the effect of light of a highlight this is similar to the technique that you know that we learned in the beginner level spray paintings and that's when you start scratching and showing the negative space on your poster board very similar except we're doing it with paints now we've outgrown that face right if we're, if we're watching this tutorial we've outgrown that face and we're experimenting with highlights using paints to create highlights look at that let me show you what that looks like take a look at that texture let's see if I can create a little more texture while I'm holding it in the air no can't do it now guys see how the tool gets dirty very easy way to clean it little napkin now you don't need to clean the entire tool you I, I suppose you could you know and it comes off I just don't want to do it on top of the painting uh, but it rubs off see it comes off very very easily so you can always have a clean tool you don't have to worry about paint uh, contamination when you're doing something like this and I'm gonna come over here add a little bit of black a little bit of blue now look once again this is how I create um, my pine trees so I start from the top and as I start coming down start going back and forth back and forth and I won't do it all the way so that you guys can see see that you guys can definitely use a bigger piece of sea sponge and the bigger piece will definitely help you create a more well-defined pattern and less strokes to create it uh, since I'm using a little piece well I have to go back and forth a few more times than I would if I was using a bigger piece see that tap 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 it's all about tapping now usually these trees unless you trim them yourself or you know they, they tend to go down pretty far down So we could actually cover some of our paint, uh, some of the painting that we did, our background painting. I, I won't, I won't let it do that though. I'll stop it right about here. Now, what I will do, oh, I'll add a little bit of clear coat to this, and I'll use the regular spray castle tool, and I'll create little branches. You can scratch those off here. I'll do it on the dark side so you guys can see it. See those? OK. 
Okay, well, you want to do that down here as well. You can use the other tip of it as well. Look at that. See, that's, and I think that would be the only, the only time, guys, I would let it slip that you scratched the paint to create the effect of branches, you know. I think that's the only time I would kind of let it slide by and say, well, all right, all right. But if you're doing it for highlights, yeah, then I'm definitely going to tell you something about that. Because look, if you come in here and you start scratching, yeah, I don't know. It, it attracts your eye too much and you can tell it's scratching and it just, it doesn't look very good. So I recommend you guys experiment with colors rather than sketch, scratching the highlights out. Uh, I think I'm going to add a little bit of black here on my sea sponge. It's going to tap here in the background. Now with a little bit of clear coat, here, let me put this right here. Back and forth, back and forth. Just to add more definition to that darkness in the background. All right. Well, I mean, that's that's how I do it, guys. And a little bit of black here. Maybe we can even use the uh, the dream technique. You guys remember that? That's where I go around the edges just a little bit. And that'll help focus the attention of the painting right onto the center part of it. Well, uh, this is uh, definitely a beginner intermediate level painting. I showed you how to create some trees, uh, how to do different uh, layers for creating background, for creating depth. We started off with a, a blue with white, created a light blue background, a little bit of white, and then we started working with darker colors. And every time we got closer to the viewer, we would add a layer of dark. That would create uh, the illusion of depth. Right. So you can see the mounds fade into the background, and then as you get closer, you start adding darker colors. And then I did the same thing with the trees here in the background. This tree is bluer than this one. This one, I'm using a little bit more black. Uh, we added definitely a lot of definition to our trees using this tool. We just went back and forth, back and forth, just to create the effect of bark. Uh, guys, if you're going to make a, a master level painting out of something like this, well, then you're going to want to start uh, thinking about that light and dark technique so that you make your trees look more 3D. You're going to want to think about the layout flow. You know, you can add some trees here. You don't want to completely cover the background. Uh, so, you know, you might want to think about having maybe a little bit darker blue trees here and then have them fade. I mean, have them darken as you get closer to it. But overall, I think this painting did a good job in explaining to you how to create depth in your spray paintings again guys if you guys have any questions comments leave them below send me a, a question on facebook we also have the spray paint masters revolution we have a bunch of great spray painters there you know masters of their own techniques these guys are definitely a lot of help so come on over check us out uh you don't have to necessarily ask me you can ask them how they do their techniques there's definitely a lot of ways of of skinning a cat right so guys come on over check us out until next time, keep those cans shaking. We'll see you again soon.